Hi, my name is Victoria and I'm a thyroid cancer survivor. We are at the THICA, Thyroid Cancer Survivors Association Conference in Denver, Colorado. I'm here with Dr. Tracy Wang. Dr. Wang, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. We're going to be talking about medullary thyroid cancer, mm -hmm. but can we first start out telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I am an endocrine surgeon by training, which means I did my general surgery residency and a fellowship in endocrine surgery, so it's a one-year um, fellowship. Um, I am currently a, a surgeon in, at the Medical College of Wisconsin in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm a professor of surgery in our department of surgery, and I'm the chief of the section of endocrine surgery there. Great, thank you again. Thanks. So can you help us understand a little bit about medullary thyroid cancer? What is it and how is it different from other, other thyroid cancers? So medullary thyroid cancer is um, very different from other types of thyroid cancer because it's from a different, completely different type of cell. Um, it's a neuroendocrine tumor, um, which means that it acts differently and also means that we have better tumor markers for it, um, namely calcitonin and CEA levels. And so that helps us guide preoperative planning and postoperative follow-up for patients in a, in a different way than we can for, for papillary thyroid cancer, for example. Um, it is much less common than papillary thyroid cancer, um, but um, and, and, and partly it's because of the neuroendocrine nature. Um, there's also a form of this um, that's inherited, so about 25% of patients who have medullary thyroid cancer will actually have an inherited syndrome um, that causes the medullary thyroid cancer. And so it's really important for patients who have this diagnosis to also see the appropriate genetic counselor and talk to them about whether or not they need to be tested for mutations. So sh does the thyroid cancer patient get the genetic testing or does the whole family get the genetic testing? So the first person to do it should be the patient. Um, okay. And then depending on those results, um, then we suggest we talk about testing for other family members. So children, if they have any siblings and parents, um, are, are the first people that we would test. Okay. So let's go back a step. Let's say someone has just been diagnosed with medullary thyroid cancer. Mm -hmm. What does the treatment typically look like for this cancer? So it's surgery. Um, before we get to surgery, though, we do things a little bit differently than with papillary thyroid cancer. Okay. So anyone who's been diagnosed with medullary thyroid cancer usually happens in the same way. It's because of an ultrasound and a biopsy. We then get the calcitonin and CEA levels um, because that helps us determine if they need additional imaging studies before surgery, so a CT scan to see if there's any disease in their lungs or their liver or their bones. And that's really important before we proceed with surgery. Okay, thank you. And then, so someone with medullary thyroid cancer, should they go to a center of excellence? Can they just go to any doctor, or should they see a specialist of some sort? I'm biased. Um, okay, that's but okay. I, I do think that um, patients with medullary thyroid cancer should see a specialist. Okay. Um, because surgery is the best treatment for medullary thyroid cancer, um, there, are no, there are some chemotherapies that can be used um, in advanced stages, but really getting a, a biochemical cure, so levels of calcitonin that are not detectable after surgery, is so important in preventing um, recurrent disease and needing another operation. Um, and because it is relatively rare, um, you, you really should see someone who knows and makes sure that all the things both before surgery and during surgery are done in a way that gives a patient the best chance for getting a biochemical cure. Okay, so as a patient then, am I asking the physician do you specialize in medullary thyroid cancer? It's just straightforward like that, or? I, I think it's, you know, medullary thyroid cancer is rare. I think seeing someone who specializes in thyroid surgery, okay. um, you know, certainly thyroid cancer surgery is, is the first step. Um, and then getting to know their experience with medullary thyroid cancer as well. I think it's also not just the surgeon, but it's the whole team. Okay. So it's your endocrinologist, it's the, it's the support team around everybody, the medical oncologists, the radiologists, and it's really centers of excellence that are able to build that complete multidisciplinary team to give the patient um, the best possible outcome or okay. the best chance at the best possible outcome. Which is what we want. Which so. is what we okay. want. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else that you think someone should know if they've just gotten a medullary thyroid cancer diagnosis? I think we've hit on the key points. I think it's, um, you know, making sure that you're taking the right steps in, the patient's taking the right steps in, in knowing about the disease. Um, groups like FICA are amazing for that because they're a tremendous resource that anybody who has access to the internet um, can, can find information on, and that's such a scary first step mm -hmm. um, for a lot of patients. Um, I think it's being informed is the most important thing. Um, and then, you know, approaching it the right way, knowing that um, it's, a, it's a different type of cancer, but patients can do really, really well, um, and they need to find providers that they trust um, and, and work with their family and their friends with the support system. 
Dr. Wang, thank you so much for everything that you do and thank you for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Thank you.